So we're going to learn how to send a POST request to an API in PowerShell. And a POST request basically means that we want to take information and we want to send it to an API. We're going to be using GitHub for this example, and we're going to be creating a gist. So first we need their API URL, which we have here. We need the endpoint that we want to talk to, which we have here. And then we're going to smush them together. So let's run all of this code. And we have this complete URL called URL Anon. And from this URL, we'll be able to interact with the gist endpoint of their API. So now we need to create the gist. And we're going to do that by making a PowerShell hash table. That is a representation of what the API endpoint is looking for. We have this structure here, which is basically a PowerShell hash table. So it starts with this at symbol, then it uses brackets here, the squiggly brackets, and it's structured very much like JSON. Hash tables have key and value pairs. We are going to pass this hash table to convert to JSON. And if we run it over here, you'll see that it has converted the hash table to a JSON structure. And now we can take this JSON and we can send it to their API. So here's invoke rest method. We're saying that this is a post request and we're using our URL, a non variable that points to the gist endpoint. And then in the body parameter, we're handing off the JSON. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, so we assigned the response to a variable. So if we look in this response variable, you'll see that GitHub's given us a lot of information back. If something broke, we would have had an error message show up, but this worked. We have just created a gist and now they have given us a response back that we can dig into and look at. So we have stuff like the URL, we have the commits URL, we have the ID of it, the one that we want to take a look at here is the HTML URL, which is going to give us their beautiful GitHub interface with all the code highlighting and neat stuff like that. So we can go to this URL and we can see that our gist is on GitHub now. This is live code. We have spoken with their API and we have string file contents here. We have file.txt, but you'll notice that this is an anonymous gist. We didn't need to do any sort of authentication. We didn't need to provide a password. We didn't need to create an account. So you can create gists on GitHub without having to use an account. The problem with that is that you won't be able to update your gists. You won't be able to manage them any further. Once you've created it, that's it. So what if you want to be able to update an existing gist? Well, you're going to have to tell GitHub that you want this gist to be created using your account. And to do that, we're going to need to get an API key. So let's come back down over here to our code. And you can see that I have this thing called an access token. And I'm going to show you really quick how to generate this access token on GitHub because it's really simple. So we're going to come back over here and this is what GitHub looks like when you log in. So I'm going to go down to settings. I'm going to click on personal access tokens. And this is where you can generate a whole bunch of access tokens in order to work with the GitHub API. So we're going to generate a new token here and we're just going to call it my token. And you'll see that you can select different scopes. And the cool thing about these tokens is that you can generate a bunch of them and you can give them different access scopes. So let's say that we want this key to only be able to create gists. We would select gist, and when we create this key, that's all the key can do. It cannot edit any of our existing repos. It cannot edit any of our account information. So this is a security measure. Maybe you wanna run your PowerShell code on a remote server, and somebody hacks the server, and they steal your API key. Well, the most that they could do is create gists with that API key and maybe create some ASCII art of dick butt and you see it on your account. And that's 
that's the worst thing that could happen. So different APIs will handle keys and security differently. This is one of the options. There's basic authentication as well. Uh, but we're going to go with this API key because it's really secure. It's really easy to use. So we're going to generate this token. And with GitHub, you have to make sure that you copy it as soon as you create it. Because once you refresh the page, you will not be able to access that token again. This is another security feature so that if somebody logs into your GitHub account, they're not going to be able to grab all of your tokens. So you create the token, you copy it, and you can see here it's never been used. And now we're going to use it. So we take that token and we go back to the code. And I'm going to edit this existing token that I've used here to use the new one that we've created. So now we're going to assign it to this new variable. Now, what is this token variable? So we're creating a new U, uh, URL called URL secure. URL secure is going to be the URL. It's going to be the endpoint. And then it's going to be this question mark access token is equal to my access token. And when GitHub sees that, it will say, hey, this person wants to associate this request with an account. And we're going to check to see if this token is allowed to function with this request. So let's make it just like this. Now we're going to look at URL secure. And you can see that URL secure is similar to the one that we used before, but now it has an access token. And then we're doing the exact same thing that we did before, only with our URL secure variable. So let's run it. So we have this gist variable again. Let's take a look at it. So now we have more information here. You can see that it has a history. It has the owner, which is new. You can see all of this owner information. We have the ID, we have the URL. So let's get the HTML URL like we did before. And you can see it's the same gist that we created before, only now it's associated with the Mr. PowerScripts account. So we have more control over this gist now that we've created it with our API key. So let's say that we want to make a change to this gist. How would we do that? Let's go back to the API instructions. And you can see that you can edit a gist. You can use the patch method. You would send it to gist ID. And you would put the same structure that you would you did before. And we're going to update that existing gist. So let's do it programmatically, right? Because this response gave us the gist ID and we needed to put the gist ID in the URL. So that's what we're doing here. We're creating a URL edit URL. And this is a notation here to extract the ID from the gist variable. Basically, it's telling PowerShell, I want to expand the ID and include it in this string here using the string expansion of PowerShell. So when I run this code, you'll see that we have a new URL edit string API github.com slash gists with the gist ID and then the access token. So now we're going to create JSON 2, which is just a modified version of our JSON structure up here. We're going to edit the same file, but we're going to change the description to potato and we're going to change the content to I'm hungry. So let's run this to get JSON 2. And now we're going to use JSON 2 in the body and we're going to use URL edit as the URL. Now you should put patch because you're editing an existing piece of information. The methods usually mean something, but you can still use post. It works. But as you can see on their documentation, they're suggesting patch. So let's just break the rules a little bit here. We're going to run this code and it worked and we should have a new gist response. And if you take a look in the history, you'll see that the history has increased. All of this information is the same. The owner is the same. So let's take a look at it back on GitHub and we're going to refresh it just like that. And you'll notice that now the description says potato. The file says I'm hungry. It has two revisions. We can go back 
and we can look at how the file has changed. So this over here was the original file, string file contents. And then over here, we can see how it has changed. So string file contents was removed and we have added, I'm hungry. So that's it. Sending post requests in PowerShell using invoke rest method. Thanks for watching.